There are two very different types of human beings. Some have the type of courage that allows them to undertake action and make bold, exploring adventures. Others have a persistence in action that they have once undertaken. They're quite different types. Both are needed in space. The first man who makes a try to reach the moon is going to need more than science. If he makes it, it'll be just as much luck as anything else. Because whenever men try a thing for the first time, the first effort is made while they are still unsure. It's always a gamble. You don't wait for surety. And it's apt to fail. Nothing works right. Something's gone wrong. What did happen? When? When? What, what did happen? Where am I supposed to be going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm lost. I'm lost out here in space. Why can't I remember? Why can't I remember? I must lose my head. I just gotta think and then try to remember who I am. What I'm doing out here. You're in a mess, aren't you? What? I said you're in a mess. Somebody here? That ought to make you feel a lot better. You here? Who are you? You don't know me? If I did, I wouldn't ask. You know me, but you've forgotten. Forgotten? You know who you are? No. Well, why, well, why have you kept quiet? Why didn't you answer when I yelled out? I was watching you. I was watching the perfect specimen of the perfectly adjusted young man. What? That's who you are. Didn't you know that? No. What are you doing on this ship anyway? Are, are you supposed to be here? No, I stowed away. Stowed? That's right. Oh, it's impossible. Why? I don't know. Oh, they took every precaution. The security boys were on the job, but I got through them. It was easy. Why not? I helped to build this ship. You? Yes, me. You're a, you're a scientist? I designed most of this ship. Well, then you know this control panel. No. I only know the physical structure of the ship itself. You... you say I know you. My name's Hopper. Gilbert Hopper. I was fired from the project. You know why? Did I know? Everyone knew. It was in the papers. Well, I don't remember. Our chief psychiatrist, Professor Bergman, decided I was too unreliable. In plain words, he thought I was too much of an erotic. So I was fired from the project. Oh... Uh, Professor Bergman thinks a lot of you, though. He picked you for this job because you're a well-adjusted young man. Yeah, well, I don't feel very well-adjusted at this moment. No, you have a slight case of amnesia, but that'll pass. You had a shock just now, and you couldn't take it. You're hiding behind a temporary loss of memory at the moment. Bergman could tell you that. And it would shock him if he knew. Yeah, I suppose so. At least, even if we never get back, you won't have all the glory. I've seen to that. I left a note telling them I was aboard this ship, so they'll know. Glory? What glory? You were picked from several volunteers to be the first man to rocket to the moon. That was your destination. The... what? The idea didn't gel with me. I had more to do with this ship's design than anybody. I figured I had a right to be aboard when it took off. The moon? All right, you're not alone now. You can snap out of it. Your name's Fremont, Gary Fremont. You have a wife and one kid. Your wife's name is Dorothy. Does that ring a bell? No. Well, it will soon. You said I had a shock. What was it? We were hit by a meteor. It damaged something and the computer's not working. Maybe other things are not working. Well, in any case, we're a million miles off our course and lost in space. Well, I don't care. They'll know I was one of the first two men to travel in outer space. That's all I care about. Well, now, how do you know we're off course? I know we're not within the moon's orbit. Put on your screen, the one for front vision. Press that left button. Well? Nothing. Not even a star. Just black space. Well, what are we going to do? You're the pilot. Try to set a new course. But how? I, I, I've got to get a bearing. Contact Earth. Maybe you can get one. Try the radio. No, what do you think I'm doing? Any response? No, not yet. We're out of touch. What's going to happen to us? What's the worst that can happen? We'll die out here, that's all. Die? You say I have a wife and a kid. She was going to divorce you anyhow, if you came on this trip. This will make it easier for her. A widow doesn't need a divorce. No, 
a man who's well adjusted to the tensions of modern business would be very poorly adjusted, very poorly indeed, to the tensions of, uh, let's say, caveman days, of uh, a saber-toothed tiger lurking behind the bush, or a cave bear invading his home. I wonder if our present concept of a well-adjusted man isn't just about as far off when it comes to being well-adjusted in space. Made a big difference there. Ricky? It's coming back, huh? Is that my son's name? Yes. I'm beginning to remember things. That's a help. Yeah, there was a scene just before I took off. Dorothy tried to get to me. They wouldn't let her talk to me. That's right. They told me she'd come to wish me luck and to forget what she said about a divorce. Well, women change their minds. They're emotionally unstable, uh, like I am. Oh, shut up. Does it all come back now? Yeah, everything. Good. So how does the perfectly adjusted young man feel now? Well, how am I supposed to feel? Able to meet and face an emergency. Bergman was sure you were the man for this job. If anything went wrong, you could handle the situation? The parachute. The what? The drop capsule. We're carrying one. That's right. I'd forgotten about that. It's equipped with cameras and devices for recording data. You must have picked up quite a lot of data so far. In any emergency, I'm supposed to release the capsule and it'll go back to Earth. Well, I'd release it pretty soon then, or it may never get there. I don't know. It's important the capsule gets back, you fool. Don't you call me a fool. All right. It can wait. Shut up. I'm trying to figure something out. Go ahead. Figure. Is there anything to eat? Open that compartment. There's uh, coffee and food there. Coffee. That's fine. Hot coffee in space. What will they think of next? You want some? Yeah. You take cream? No, black. Sugar? No. You're easily satisfied? Here. I've got it. I'm sorry about you, though. Oh, I've been sorry for me all my life. You'd be surprised at all the frustrations I've had to go through dealing with idiots. Yeah. If they'd listened to me, we wouldn't be in this jam. How's that? I wanted them to slow down on this project until I'd worked out a gadget that would have prevented that meteor hitting us. Well, go on. You're not a scientist. You wouldn't understand. In simple words, I had an idea for something that would cause the force being radiated from the meteor to deflect this ship from its course just far enough so the meteor would miss us. They said it was impossible. I called them a pack of idiots. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. Only because you're a layman. Well, could you have worked it out? Yes, given time. But I talked about it afterwards to someone who didn't have security clearance. So I was fired. Oh, I never knew the actual reason. Well, maybe now they'll be sorry they didn't listen to me. When the capsule gets back, they will see we were hit by a meteor. I hope the newspapers hear about it. I guess it'll be up to me to tell them. Up to you. When the capsule is dropped, I'm going to be inside it. What? I'm going to strip it of enough weight to let me travel with it. That means the cameras and the recording devices will have to be jettisoned. What are you talking about? I'm talking about saving my life and getting back to my wife and kid. Your wife and son? Who do you think you are that your wife and son are so important to the world? They'll get along without you. They won't have to. You're not thinking of them. You're thinking of your own skin. Okay, so I am. That was another thing I rebelled against. I told them to send a scientist on this job, not just a man trained to be a pilot. The scientist would know he had to die, because he'd be dying for what he believes in. Dying for a reason. I told them that, but they sent you. So you were right. But that's not going to be my funeral. No? As I said, I'm sorry about you. But you have no right being here. I can't consider you. Under normal circumstances, I'd have jettisoned you, or killed you and then jettisoned you. That might have been difficult. I don't think so. But now you're going to jettison valuable equipment and data to save your own neck. My neck is valuable to me. A Bergman will be very shocked. That'll be too bad. We didn't figure on your cracking up. You were too well adjusted. I still am. Too well adjusted to die when I can save myself. Now listen, will you listen to me? For a couple of seconds. We're in no physical danger, actually. You know that. We're traveling in space and we're lost. We may hit something any minute and that'll be the end of us. We'll travel until something like that happens. We're generating more fuel than we can use, right? Well, we're the first men, the first human beings to reach out of space. Let's make the most of it. Let's find out things for as long as we can. Sooner or later, we may be able to contact Earth by radio again. We can send back extra data. You send it back, chum. I'll be back there listening. I doubt that. If the capsule gets back, 
I'll be inside it. I may be a live coward, but I don't want to be a dead hero. I'll let you play that role. You're the scientist, not me. You're not going to script that capsule, Fremont, because I won't let you. You're going to obey orders and release it now. Put away that gun. After I've killed you, if you make one move to strip that capsule... Why, are you crazy? <laughs> you asked for that. Now you've got it. You know, there are actually times when saving a machine is more important than saving a human life. The information is the major purpose of sending a first ship into space. And the information is therefore more important since that will save many lives in the future than the one life that's been lost by an accident. Uh, there are times when a machine should be saved even if it risks a human life. Oh. You're tough. Why not? You used to be a football oh, hero. Shut up. Is that all you can say? You better sit still and let me finish putting this bed to John. I passed out. That was half an hour ago. The bullet passed through your left shoulder. And I've done all I can do for you. You lost your head, didn't you? Boy, if I could have gotten my hands on that gun, I'd have blown your brains out. I was pretty sure of that. That's why I pressed the trigger. In a way, I'm glad I didn't kill you. The capsule. I released it. What? I released it. It's on its way back to Earth. You're a fool, Hopper. Because I didn't do what you wanted to do? You had your chance. Your mind is still Earthbound. My body isn't, and neither is yours. I meant you have no conception of what a real scientist is, or what makes him tick. If they're all like you, they're a bunch of screwballs. A few of them are like me. All right, I don't know what kind of a bandage it is, but I hope it holds. Thanks, anyway. I'll turn on the screen. There may be something to see. There's something out there. A planet. Yeah, a planet, all right. Life on it, I wonder. Doesn't seem to have any satellites around it. What about those lights? A planet. You seem to be skirting it. Turn that thing off. Gives me the creeps. Fascinating. Turn it off. You scared? Just turn it off. <laughs> what speed are we traveling? Look for yourself. 100,000 miles an hour. That's cruising speed. She can do better. Well, it's fast enough to be going nowhere. If we could only get a bearing. Try the radio again. Press that yellow button. Sure. U.S. Lunar 3. Hello, please. Contact. Hello, please. Contact. Hello. We're out of range. She was right. My wife was right. She warned me. I might never get back. Don't worry. You'll be the all-American hero. She'll be proud of you. But she wouldn't have been if you'd gone back in that capsule. Shut up, will you? I don't know what to do. Without a bearing, I don't know which way to fly. I don't know what to do. Every time I look at you, I see this well-adjusted young man. My life has been full of these jokes. You're made of cast iron. I'm made of rubber. I can be bent. If they bend you, you break. Very funny. What do you think you're doing? Looking over these controls. Well, that won't do us any good. No, but it helps pass the time. Do you have any cigarettes? No, I don't smoke. That's right, you don't. Oh, never mind. I have a cigar here. I hope it doesn't offend your pure lungs. You're lucky I have my arm bandaged. Mm -hmm. But I still have my right arm. You keep needling me, and I'm going to take a poke at you. No. Uh, if you get rough again, I'll simply finish you off. I still have this gun. What made you bring it? Well, I figured you might try to jettison me uh, if you found me aboard, so I took a precaution. Hey, be careful with that control. I only moved it slightly. The meter says we're moving 25 degrees off our previous course. If we're headed, that's crazy, isn't it? The whole thing, this ship will keep flying for several weeks. Just flying through space, unless we hit something. The interesting thing will be when we no longer generate fuel. What happens then? If 
we're in some form of gravity, we start falling. If we're out of gravity, then we'll just float in space and continue floating into eternity. This ship, weighing perhaps 100 tons, will be no heavier than a feather. Yeah. It'll be something to think about while we die. Mind if I turn on the screen? Do what you like. There she is. That's her, isn't it? A moon or the moon? Fremont, that's the moon. Our own satellite. There's the Earth down there. Look. It's the Earth? You're right, Hopper. That, that's the moon. What did you do? How did you, how did you get back on course? I fooled around with the controls, that's all. What do you think you're going to do, Fremont? Do? We're going home. You're wrong. Our destination is the moon. That's where we're going, fellow. Keep her on course or I will. All right, Hopper. Okay. At least, at least I feel closer to home now. They'll probably give you a medal if and when we get back. We'll get back. And they'll most likely put me in jail for stowing away over my dead body. No, no. You live to get a hero's reward. <laughs> They say that during World War II, frequently, a company would have two sets of non-com officers. Uh, one set who was in charge of the company when they were back in town and could keep the boys spruced up properly. And another set that uh, got promoted again when they went back in the line because they knew how to fight. Uh, it sort of looks like that's what happened in the spaceship, doesn't it? <laughs> 